Yeah, you may be seated. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. And uh, I want to read one verse of scripture here. It said, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. I want to tell you why we have to look at that. Because it sounds like a nice spiritual thing to say, you know, the rock and all that. No, it's, it's trying to tell you to look back and see how bad things were for you. You started out with nothing, and you don't need to stay with nothing. Say amen. I'm giving you modern-day translation. I don't care what these religious people try to talk about making something spiritual out of something that's ridiculous. Do I want to look like a rock? Hello. Do I look like a rock? Or am I a moving, handsome man with brilliance in my mind and, and power in, in, inside of me, right? Isaiah 51 is a very powerful scripture. It says, he was telling you who, who seek righteousness and want to follow after the Lord, look back to where you came from. Nothing. Even when you were born, you were a naked baby. Hello? With nothing at all. You didn't know what to do. You didn't know how to take care of yourself. But you were wonderfully made in the glory of God. Lift your hand. Say, I, was, I started out well. What happened? You didn't say the last part. What happened? Yeah. That's the important part. So, basically, throughout the scripture, we see that it, it doesn't matter what happened before. It only matters what happens now. And if you don't get the mind of God to correct what is going to be from where you are right now, and I, I really don't know what you're going to do in life. Outside, everywhere, you see people doing all kinds of things, and they just leave everything the way it is. God said, no, look back to when it was nothing. Even the Holy Spirit, in Genesis 1, began to uh, move over the face of the deep. And, uh, and um, when the earth was without form and void. Your life was without form and void. Before you had direction from God. Praise the Lord. Now listen, I'm going to teach here. I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to make noise. I'm not going to try to get you excited. You've had people to do that. Now you need men to make you think. Praise the Lord. Hit yourself in the head and say hi. Hi. Say hello to yourself. Say this foolish mind of mine is going to get wise. Hit yourself in the head. If you don't want to do it, the neighbor next to you, hit them in the head. And say, get, you can wake up. Wise up. Not rise up. Rise up, yeah, but you got to wise up before you rise up. If you rise up without knowing what to do, you won't know what to do. I, I'm a different kind of guy. I'll tell you straight from the beginning, okay? I'm not your normal preacher, and I'm very happy about that. You know, people that make noise, shouting at the devil all through the town. Singing the same song. God goes, really? Is that all you got? Is that all I gave you? You don't want to stand and prophesy? You don't want to stand and move into the dimensions that I have for you. You want to just leave everything the way it is. God said, look back and see where you came from. You came from a rock. You were hewn out of a rock. You were dug out of a pit. You were made from dirt. You were without form and void until I breathed life into you. And the Bible says, God breathed into them life and made them a living spirit. <laughs> 
which is the attributes of the Holy Ghost. Uh, lift your hands to have the Holy Ghost. I hope you do. I, I really hope so. I believe so. You know, I'm, I, I'm a positive thinker. Even in, when you look at everything that's not happening too well, you still think, well, there's hope. Say amen. Let's continue. It says, you who want to seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you are hewn. I said that already. And, and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. Why would God put that there when he's about to talk about greatness? Because he wants you to understand that looking back has no uh, benefit at all. Lift your hands. Isaiah 43, 18. I'm going to share a lot of scriptures here from, just from the Holy Ghost. Isaiah 43, 18 says, Consider not the th former things, of, remember not the things of old. And he said, Because I'm going to do a new thing, verse 19. Shall it not now spring forth? And he says, verse 20, I'm going to make it even run, in the, uh, make rivers to run in the wilderness. And in, in the dry places, I'll make rivers to, to water to run everywhere. I can do it anywhere. Say, Praise the Lord. So, And he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Now, this is what happened with Abraham. God had to take him out of his father's house. Genesis 12, 1. Terah was an idol worshiper. There were a house of the, the Ur of, in the Ur of Chaldees where they were moon worshipers. They were very weird people. So Abraham couldn't get blessed there. Lift your hands. Say, I can't get blessed everywhere. You think, you, you think that's a wrong statement? No, it's the absolute truth. And if someone doesn't tell you that, they haven't helped you from the pulpit. Enough of this nonsense preaching going on in the church that leads people nowhere. Nonsense songs, nonsense prayers. Praise the Lord. Say it's ending here today in Jesus' name. Everything needs to have a purpose because what you prophesy will happen. What you declare will happen. What you think about, if you desire it enough, it'll, you'll begin to chart your course forward. It'll begin to happen. And God doesn't want people to live in poverty and lack in despair. He said, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my servant. Psalm 35, 27. Third John 2 said, Beloved, that's me. I want you to prosper, my son Thomas. And I want you to be in good health even as your soul prospers. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3 says, Treasures of all kinds of places I'll give to you. By this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God, who even calls you by your own name because I want to bless you. A key scripture here, Isaiah 48, 17. I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit and lead you in the way you should go. So if you want a prophet, you need to hear a prophet. If you want a P-R-O-F-I-T, you need to have a P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Say amen. You need to understand the, the mind of God. What does a prophet do? One thing really basically, in the midst of all of how it works, one thing that a prophet does is he just brings and expresses the mind of God. What's on the mind and the heart of God? What? Oh, the Holy Ghost just fell right here. Kasha, lift your hands. Kashika rambar dear. Just right now, just like a flash of fire, just hit me. That's what he wants to do is share his counsel, his understanding, his wisdom, his knowledge, his brilliance. He wants us to understand what it is he wants to do. And, and, and a prophecy in reality is God thinking out loud. He's just having a vocal expression for what's on his mind. A seer is not always a prophet. A prophet is always a seer, but a seer is not always a prophet. A prophet is the man with the microphone. The prophet is the man with the, you know, the, the loud voice in the old days. To shout to the people and to write things down. Why did God have all these things written in the word? I listened to a great old man from England, been in the ministry 70 years, and I posted his little message on my Facebook page. This morning, because I think it's worth hearing, he said, two things I would tell any minister. Know the word and apply it. Know the word and work with it. That's it. That's it. That's the, that's all, that's the only thing I would tell anybody. 
If you do that, you'll succeed because God has it all, all his counsel here. Why would he have 40 authors write this book over 1,500, 1,600 years, 865,000 words, 1,189 chapters, amen, uh, of what he's saying, 66 books uh, from different authors. Praise the Lord. Why would he do that? Why would he give us something to read, something to live by? Why would he give us his laws? But then he gives teachers, okay, to break it down. You, you read the Bible, just read it by yourself. You can't understand everything. But God will give emphasis like I just did on Isaiah 51. You may read that and think that's a pious, solemn moment. Look back to the rock where I took you from and the pit you were digged. No, it means you were like, you, you were like a, a foolish, uh, uh, unsustaining, <laughs> unable person in the beginning. So it means give me the glory, but let me take you to where you're going. He said, I called Abram apart alone. Isaiah 51, 1. This is all in one verse. I called Abram apart alone. And then I blessed him. And then I increased him. Lift your hands. Blessed and increased. Whoa. Are people being blessed and increased? No, not, not too often. If we look around, you see a lot of people that are not being increased. So what does it mean? It means they haven't, God hasn't taken them apart. They have, God, people haven't let God take them apart. And look at the past and say how disgusting it is. Look at the road, how disgusting it is. Look at the neighborhood and the environment, how disgusting everything is. How untoward everything is. How impoverished, how messed up, how broken everything is. And say, now this is not okay. I got to go. I got to go into the blessing and increase realm. Lift your hands. And these, these, these foolish people that think that you shouldn't talk about money and finance in the kingdom. The devil is a liar and so are you. If people don't be taught, how are they going to understand? If people don't get taught, how are they going to understand anything? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. If people don't get teaching on how to work in the biblical economic system, how are you going to do it? If you don't have a man tell, stand up and tell you how it works, how is it going to work for you? Well, the preacher just wants money from you. You, you, you're nuts. How much money you got? I got big pants. I got big pockets. You see, this is my tailor me. Uh, how many pockets do I have? How, much, how many millions do I have in my pocket? How much money you got? I want money from you. You got to be joking. You're a joker. Who needs anything from you? Keep it. Keep it. Praise the Lord. But if you get the revelation, we don't need anything from you. We don't need it. Lift your hands. Say he doesn't need it. Nobody needs it. If you give, you give to yourself. When you give, you give to yourself. Lift your hands. You give, and then God gives you the harvest back. <clears throat> what was Abraham famous for? One of the things he was famous for was his tithe to the high priest Melchizedek, who they likened unto Jesus. <laughs> huh? Said he was without origin, without father or mother. We don't understand that except to say, well, that had to be talking about God himself. And Abraham got the revelation. He said, I want to pay tithes for me. I want to pay tithes for my, grand my children and my grandchildren. Even Levi, who was to be his grandson, was paying tithes before he was even conceived. Lift your hands, because of his father Abraham. Who is the other one? Solomon said he was supposed to give seven burnt animals but he decided to give a thousand lift your hands and God got so shocked that when Solomon fell into a dead sleep because he was so tired from doing the sacrifice of a thousand burnt animals it was tiring it's a lot of work it's the, it's a hard job it's messy it's nasty right Could, how would you like to kill have killed and then burn a thousand animals to make this smoke that supposedly back then God would receive and smell it and go, ah, it's a sacrifice. Lift your hands. We don't do that these days. What do you do with goats? You eat them. I don't. Uh, sheep, you eat them, right? Mutton and amboozies, right? I, I don't fool with that. I rebuke goats and I teach the sheep, but I don't eat them. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Are you understanding me okay? Am I going too fast? 
hit yourself in the head again and say, whoa, hallelujah, this is great. I'm going to learn something here in these few moments. I won't be here all day, but I'm going to, I'm going to impart something while I'm here. Praise the Lord. I said, hallelujah. God is big and he wants us to be big. And if you don't get it, if you don't first get it in your mind and your heart, how are you going to do it? So Solomon had a reference point. Abraham had a reference point. God, he became friends with God. Moses became the friend of God. David became a, became a man after God's own heart. And Solomon followed after David. How did Solomon become the richest, greatest king that ever was? As Jesus said, he was the greatest king, but the greater than Solomon is now here, meaning myself. How? How did that happen? Because he had a reference point. He had a mentor. All the regrets I have in my life because I didn't have teaching in a certain area at a certain time. I didn't have somebody speaking into my ear saying, hey, look at this, look at this, do this, do it this way. Many times in my life I didn't have that and I have regrets about that now. Because you lose time, you make wrong decisions. Amen, can I tell you from when you're young, you need to start to get aggressive to go make money and to go buy property, hello and to go own your own places and fix your life and all that. Then when you have an opportunity and you don't do it, something's wrong with you. I've had that happen. It's disgusting. I have tremendous regrets and pain over that. Set your life up. Set your life up that you can live any way you want. When you get something, make it work for you. Learn the art of investing. And sometimes people are con artists and they're liars and there's wrong deals and all that and liars and cheaters and thieves. But guess what? They have a place in the burning fire in the future. Praise the Lord. That's for them. But for us, we're not supposed to lose anything. So even if you lost anything along the way, you got to claim the scripture. In Joel 2.25, God said, now I'm going to begin to restore to you the years that were stolen, the things that were stolen from you. I'm going to give it back. And the Bible says when, you, when you've been stolen from, now you have a sevenfold back promise that you receive back seven times. And even for your shame, the shame that you suffered, you'll have double. You'll have double for your trouble. God will bless you even a thousand times more. Isaiah 60, 22, Isaiah 1, 11, I'll make you a thousand times more than you are. This is the plan of God. Everything needs to increase, increase, increase. I want to teach the babies in Kenya and Africa and everywhere in the world, Europe and America and Asia. I want to teach babies. I want to talk to them and say, you need to grow up. By the time you're 15 years old, you could be a millionaire. You could have your own business. God, go meditate. Go pray and say, God, give me an idea how I can create an enterprise. It's unbelievable that you see people in the world, these YouTube kids and all that. Some of them making millions of dollars and they're 10 years old. Lift your hands. I, and, but they're not worth, they're not, they didn't get it from the church. But a pastor can only take you as far as he's been stretched. That's why we need teachers. That's why we need prophets. The prophet could speak something and it could just enact something, impart something, cause something to explode and come up in you that wasn't there before. We need that. We need the voice of God. And we need to listen to people that are successful. Let me tell you one thing. Never have anybody talk about uh, giving unless they're a giver. Never have to, to anybody talk about business or anything unless they're doing some business. Okay? I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. I'm the prophet of God unto the nation. This is what I do 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. This is what I do. I don't run companies. I don't sell products. I don't market things. I don't do those things. This is my, this is my work. This is my holy calling. And I consider it being higher than any president or any prime minister because I dictate to them. Praise the Lord. Like all the elections of Kenya for the last 20 years, God has used me to say who will come out of power and who will be in power. And I'll do it again in the next election. Don't ask me. I'm not going to tell you now. No, I'm not going to do it. I know you all want to say reject. But uh, I won't tell you what God says no, until he tells me to say.
But there are people that are going to become very successful. And they're going to learn something. It's going to come by learning things they didn't know before. But you can't get it from your environment if the environment you're in is very poor. So here's what you need to do. You need to do an Isaiah 51.1. Say, God, take me, take me away. Take me away. Lift your hands. Take me out of this. Take me out of this. Take me away from these fools. Take me away from this nonsense. Take me away from the nonsense, the poverty, the stupidity, the ignorance. Take me out of that arena. That is not my vibe. That is not my place. Uh, you say, well, I'm called to influence. No, you got to watch out. They don't influence you. Any environment you're in will influence you, whether you believe it or not. You could be the strongest, most powerful person, but in the wrong place, and you'll be diminished. Yeah. And some places God can't bless you because he's not there. He didn't assign you to be there. Always go where God's assigned you. And always looking for the people that can help you climb up. All right? I'm going to cover several messages in one, but I want to talk about killing the spirit of ignorance. Number one. Okay, that's a subtitle. Another title is building the dream team and building an, a, an immense atmosphere of glory and power and splendor and great operations. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you. That this is happening for us. We're prophesying this again. I've said this so many times, but Lord, you keep saying it. And it sometimes seems like a stubborn thing for things to work out. But you said to me last week that this is the day of manifestation. This is the day of uh, reformation. This is the day of restoration. This is the day of revolution, revival, and all kinds of things being fixed and it's the day of manifestation of these promises. And you said, my son, don't you know that it's really here? I'm telling you, it's really here. You're really going to see it. You're really going to have it. You're really going to walk in it. It's really going to happen. And uh, I got disturbed about sowing seed, you know. I wanted to sow more seed. And I don't usually talk about this, but I feel like I need to break out of the shell and talk about it. But this week I had, I said, Lord, what can I sow? I have something to sow. So I found something that I had. And I sowed it. It's two million. I sowed two million this week. I did my, myself personally. Two million. Praise the Lord. So I just did. And I'm expecting the harvest. You have to sow if you want to harvest. The Lord is amazing how uh, he'll he'll give us revelation on how to be blessed. Can I tell you, the only plan God has for you, only one, is for you to be blessed and to increase. Now, I've given you a doctrinal statement, and there's a lot more that I can share on this, but I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. I called him apart alone. I took him out from the old place of the rock and the mess, and even from his father's house. Genesis 12.1 says, God told Abram, get out of your father's house. Go, leave. Some of you need to do that. You need to leave certain people, leave certain environments. Praise the Lord. There's such a thing in the world that we could call common sense, but common sense is not always that common. Just follow your mind. Do something creative. Make decisions. Figure it out. Lift your hands. I pray this with compassion and pain and tears because of the things I've been through in my life. And I want to see people succeed, and I want to help them as quick as I can. And whatever I had loss of, God took me on the backside of the desert and taught me his ways. And now I can teach them to the whole body of Christ worldwide. If I get to do that, that's okay. It's, I feel like I've, I've accomplished something. I've gotten somewhere. But the losses, God doesn't want you to have any losses. He doesn't want you to lose time. He doesn't want you to lose money. He doesn't want you to lose anything. He doesn't want you to lose opportunities. Someone said that one definition of poor, P-O-O-R, is passing over opportunities repeatedly. Passing over opportunities regularly. Now, every opportunity is not for you to take. But uh, there are opportunities that are good. But I'll tell you the best opportunity. You want to know what it is? The best job you can ever have is to improve yourself. Write that down. I need to improve myself. That's my job. He said, is that a job? Is that a company? Does it pay me? Yes, it'll pay you big. Because when you work on yourself and you improve yourself, now the whole universe is out there waiting to come and bless you. 
Why? Because you're better. Because you're qualified. When you're qualified for something, the door will open. The opportunity will happen. But you have to be faithful along the process. But you have to work on yourself. So your job is to work on yourself. <laughs> ignorance, I'll give you a definition. The definition of ignorance is, is, it sounds like a bad word, you know. It kind of is, but what it means is to not know. It means you don't know. You're not aware. You don't understand. That's why the Bible says in, the, in uh, Isaiah 11:2. And also Revelation 5.12. Make a note of those two scriptures. Isaiah 11.2 and Revelation 5.12 talks about the spirit of knowledge and understanding and wisdom and the spirit of power and the spirit of receiving riches. I love what Jesus said. He said he took these things back from the enemy who stole them from Adam in the garden. And these were power and riches and wisdom, those three. And then strength, which is physical strength. And then glory, honor, and blessing. For the purpose of what? For us to take dominion. So God said, I want to give you power. Then I want to give you riches. Riches is number two. It's also number two in the model prayer. If you think wealth and riches and money and possessions are not important, why don't you read the Bible? Praise the Lord. Revelation 5.12 said it's number two. Power is number one. Without any power, you really can't do much. But without riches, you can't ex execute the power. And without wisdom, number three, you don't know what to do with the riches or the power. He said all that before the blessing and the glory and the honor and the strength and these things. He said those things beforehand. And Isaiah, that's Revelation 5.12. Now, in Isaiah 11.2, he said, I'll give you the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might and the fear of the Lord. Before counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord were the other things. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The Bible talks about in the book of Revelation the seven spirits of God. Now, uh, there's seven there in Isaiah 11.2. It said, the spirit of the Lord is there. That's one. He's one. He's, the, he's, he's God. Then the attributes that he has, no, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, I need these in my life. And if I begin to get them from God, I won't see everything the way, the way, the way, uh, the way I've seen it before. So he said he called them apart alone to do what? To work on him. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I have an appointment with you. And then he said, and then he said, and then Abraham was blessed and increased. God is the God of blessing and increase. Do you see it there? Do you see it there? Psalm 35, 27, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my servant. Third John 2, beloved, I wish that you prosper. King James says, I wish. New King James says, I pray. New International Version says, I desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health. Without, 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 without health, you can't enjoy your wealth. Without wealth, you can't enjoy your health. You ever had a lot of good health, you were strong, but you had no money and you couldn't go anywhere. And then you have money and you don't have direction. You don't have enough strength. That's also not good. So God included all of them in the gospel. Okay? Number one is salvation. Say praise the Lord. I have to be saved. Oh, this is the most important thing of anything in the universe. What would it profit a man even if he looks rich? Even if people say he's successful? Even if he has a lot of things that people admire them for? So what? What would it profit a person if they even gained the whole world but lost their own soul? Nothing. They're poor. They're destitute. They're judged. They're condemned forever. So there's no blessing in that. Lift your hands and say, there's no blessing in having everything but if I don't have Jesus. 
Oh, yes, this is it now. This is it. Okay. That's, that's clear, yes? You understand that, right? If anybody doesn't know Jesus as your Savior, say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Savior right now. Forgive me of all sin. You are my Lord and King from this moment on. And I accept your gift of eternal life. I'm happy to do it right now in Jesus' name. Say that prayer. Let's all say it together. Say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. You died on the cross for me. You rose again. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your salvation. I'm saved from this moment on. I'm a part of your family. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for giving me the gift of eternal life. I accept. I receive. I'm yours now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise on that. It's wonderful. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's number one. Number one. But then, let's go to number two and three through a million things. After you're saved, what do you do now? How do you live? Some people just concern themselves. They say, well, I'm righteous. I'm a Christian. So nothing else matters. No, everything else matters. Because once you're saved, you're already saved. Yes? Lift your hand if you understand what I'm saying. You're saved. You, you have the life of God in you. The, whole, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will come and indwell our spirit with himself. So that's settled. Now you have to live right, walk right. You have to keep repenting. All right? Let me give you a repentance scripture. 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John 1 and 9. Write this down. 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1 and 9 says, Confess your sin to the Lord and ask him to forgive you, and he will. And cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You need to pray that all the time. And say, Lord, whatever I did that was wrong, I shouldn't have done, I repent. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Whatever I was supposed to do that I didn't do yet, help me to do it. Give me a chance to do it now. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Now when you do that all the time, you don't have anything in your file system against you. Because the Bible says that he will forgive your sin, amen, and, and cast it away as far as the east is from the west. I will remember it no more. You can go to God and say, Lord, what about that thing that happened? God would say, what? I forgot about it. Why don't you forget about it? Forget things that are behind. There's two scriptures on that. If you want to move ahead. Paul said, I count not that myself to have apprehended the prize or the goal yet. But he said, but this thing I do, I press on toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm pushing forward. I forget those things that are behind. I look at the things that are ahead. Isaiah 51.1, God told Abram to do that. Forget about it. Forget about what it was. He told the people, you that seek after, this is for everybody. And he mentioned Abraham as an example. This is the prophet Isaiah talking. All you that say you want to walk with God, look back and see the nonsense you came from and now get up and let God take you into the place where he'll teach you his ways and increase you and bless your life. Ezra 7.10. You were talking about the book of Ezra. I like it. And the book of Hosea. Ezra 7.10 says, Ezra was a rare kind of guy. He was an interesting kind of gentleman. He wanted to know the ways of God. He sought to know the laws of God. And then number two, that was number one. Number two, he then began to work with them to see how they work, to be successful in those things. Yeah? And then he taught them to others. Can I tell you, uh, I, I'll tell you something about myself. A novice in the pulpit will not have my ears to preach at. I'll close my ears and run away. <laughs> you can't speak into my life. I can't listen to you. I was in London, England, preaching somewhere. I was going to preach somewhere. And the pastor 
turns out he was doing some very bad things. He was an African man, but he was living in London, England, from a certain African country. Thank God it wasn't Kenya. Uh, but if it was, so what? Well, you know, God, he started to pray, and the Lord spoke to me and says, I don't hear him. I don't listen to him. I was like, wow, he's the pastor of the church. God said, I don't listen to him. I thought, well, neither will I. I didn't know where to go. I walked out for a while, went in the back. It was a schoolhouse. Ugly, cold, nasty, no furniture, nowhere to sit. I walked into the hall. There was a, wind, a ledge with those old paned windows that probably were made in the, in the 1800s. I don't know when. It was horrible. I stood there for a while. I got tired. I went back to sit down. The guy's still talking. So I said, I'm just going to dive into myself, close my ears that I act like I'm not hearing, and begin to just do something with God. And God began to speak to me, and I began to write notes of things the Lord was telling me. I had my own service within the service. I just, I, I escaped the service. Finally, when it was time for him to introduce me, the Lord had me speak some things. And this guy was so guilty. You know what he did? He grabbed the back of my jacket and started to physically pull me. And he was reaching for the microphone. Every time he's reaching for the microphone, I went like this. And I kept talking. I said, when I'm done, I'm done. I'm never coming back here anyway. I'm going to speak what I'm going to speak from the Lord, and I'm leaving. And I told all the people, I said, you all better be careful who you listen to. I couldn't say, this guy's a joker. I mean, you really can't do that. If you really want to start a fight, I mean, somebody might do that. But that's really, really kind of not too polite to do. But who wants to be polite? You want to be right in God. But of course, I'm not going to say that. But I told the people, and I released a fire, that God rescue all these people out to where they need to be and from, away from whoever they need to be away from. This guy got so mad, he started to pull my... That was a war zone, okay? Can I tell you, if you were in the military and you ended up in the middle of a war zone, is it a nice place? Can you sit there and say, praise the Lord, open your Bibles to the book of, you know, Noah, chapter 2. People can look, where, where is Noah, where is that? No, it's not there. Open your Bible to the book of Imaginations, verse, chapter 7, verse 3. You know, and just have a nice little, you know, a wartime call for war measures. But that was an experience I had to have to understand more about some preachers that are not right. I, I, was, I was having lunch. I was brought to lunch in Karen with a beautiful uh, uh, husband and wife, really great servants of God. And um, they were showing me a message that was written by someone that showed up, how he's the preacher's threatening another preacher and saying he's, you know, I don't want to tell the details, all this. I told him, I said, here's what the Lord says. Block that guy. Don't answer him. Pray that he never shows up again. You don't need him. It's nonsense. Get rid of it. They went, amen. Okay, yes, I get it. They said, yes, that, that makes sense. That's what you do with evil people. Lift your hands. If we didn't tolerate liars, thieves, con artists, crooks, wrong people too long, our life would be a better place. That's why God says, I want to catch you alone. That's why Jesus went to the mountain. Because he couldn't stay down with all the people all the time, the whole night. He had to go away to listen to God. How does he come out and goes to Capernaum? He goes to Nazareth and he's disrespected there. Then he goes to Capernaum and they throng him and miracles begin to happen. How is he carrying so much glory? Because he spent time sitting in the presence of God. Amen. I said he spent time sitting in the presence of God. Can I tell you, there are entire churches, I tell you, I know this, in this land and many other lands, in this city and many other places, that people don't even know what that is. They've never done it one time. They've never been told to do it, but I'm telling you today as God's prophet. Let God catch you, out, catch you up. He said, I'll catch you away, my beloved. Come up, come up uh, before the throne of God. Boldly before the throne of grace for answers that you need in your life. The environment you're in, 
is not going to help you succeed if it's not a successful environment. Father, I prophesy to people that they'll begin to go online with the information technology you've given, that they begin to study great people, even from the world. Because the church doesn't seem to want to model this very well. So you'll have to go to the world to listen to business people who've been successful and made millions of dollars in their companies. No, they're not Christians. No, they're not church people. But they know about business. You need the information. So don't be afraid to eat the hay but spit out the sticks. Eat the grass but spit out the, hay, the dry hay and the sticks and just say, I'm, I'm strong. I can take information. I can get insight from people that are knowledgeable. That's okay. I mean, listening to a preacher with no understanding, just bellowing on with their nonsense, and I don't learn anything, why would I waste my time doing that? No, I only listen to the best. Lift your hands. If you don't know that God can direct you, put on YouTube and just begin to pray. And say, God, let this algorithms of this thing find the videos that I need to see. Put in a topic. Type in in the search thing or even in the search engine. Something that you want to learn about. And then read the things and start to click. And then the internet technology, it will begin to show other related things in the same topic. Next thing you know, you've entered a world of brilliance that you didn't know existed. Can I tell you it's out there? It's everywhere. But yet, people sit down in the environment they're in, and they don't want to get past it. But we need to kill this. That's a spirit of ignorance. Praise the Lord. Like, like poverty is a spirit. Ignorance is a spirit. Being poor, being messed up, not knowing, being unorganized, it's a spirit. It's a demonic thing. And laziness. If you're lazy, you can't impress God. Lift your hand and say, I need to get diligent. At least have it in your mind before you do it physically. And don't work so hard physically for someone without working hard in your mind for God. Make it your mission every day to say, Lord, I want to impress you. I want you to come and help me. Lift your hands. Let's pray. I feel this right now. We all need visitations. I don't care how much you walk with God or how much you know from the Bible or how gifted you are as a speaker, a, a business person, a preacher, or whatever you do in career life or whatever you do in your life. Every person needs another visitation from God. And when you sit in his presence, the worst parts of you begin to diminish and the best parts of you begin to come alive. And we need to kill this nonsense that's going on in our environment. Yesterday, I showed up at the meeting. We had the meeting, and I could see the oppression. I could see the oppression in the environment. I could see the atmosphere. I could see it. And it took a few minutes because I was a, a little bit rushed in my schedule, too. And, I, you know, I was feeling a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, I don't know how to say. And it took a while. But before we left, man, sure enough, the mind of God came. And the Lord had me have a word of knowledge for the leader there. It was very powerful. And I said, I don't have to say. They asked me, well, what is God saying? I said, I just said it. I uncovered that. I said, it's gonna, God's going to bless you there. Just, you'll let me know. And that's all I have to say. You know, when the Lord speaks, you just have to repeat what he said, and it'll happen. Amos 3, 7, surely the Lord God does nothing except he first revealed the secret to his servant, the prophet. A lion has roared in the city who will not fear. The Lord has spoken. Who then can but prophesy? In other words, God will speak as the voice, then you need to echo so then I began to have a vision, and I, I just didn't feel like I could get into it because the place was noisy. The, it was Atmosphere matters. Lift your hands. Atmosphere is very important. Can I tell you, you'll never get anywhere sitting on a matatu unless you put noise-canceling headphones on and die. Like I told you, when that guy was speaking and the Lord says, I don't like him, I just went, Shh. I dove into myself. You learn the art of that, practicing the presence of God escaping from where you are, going somewhere else in the spirit. Say, wherever I am, it doesn't matter where I'm sitting, but I can get into the presence of God, sit there, and ask God to talk. Prayer is not like shouting at the devil and shouting at God and shouting things you want. It's a dialogue. 
It's supposed to be a conversation. You speak and God also speaks. And we, many of us have not heard from God. Lift your hands and say, Lord, please talk to me. My life is, I, my, the clock is ticking. I, how much time do I have? How much time do we all have? Why, why do we waste time? Please, Lord, tell me what to do now. Direct my mind. Let me, my mind be so busy, not with nonsense, not with wrong things, not with other things that people want or that I think I might want. No, none of that. Let my mind be filled with what you want. What it is you want me to be working on. Can I tell you, a pastor, I, I felt something when I stood here. I, when I came in, I felt, uh, I knew I was supposed to come. We're going to do some things together. Yeah. And there's some things that already are already supposed to be happening. But I, I saw this. I saw this. Where we're sitting in a beautiful conference room. There's no noise from the outside. And we're just able to think and plan and speak and pray and prophesy. One time I was in the, I was in the Nelson Mandela boardroom in a certain memorial place. And uh, we sat there with a bunch of leaders, business leaders. And they asked me to pray. Dangerous thing. They asked me to pray. Prophet, we honor you. You're the servant of God. You're the patron. You're our patron. Your prophetic voice opened this business thing up to us. I said, I know. Yeah. Would you please pray? I said, okay. And I started to pray. I turned my recorder on. And let me tell you. When I turned the recorder off, I looked at the timeline on the thing. It was one hour and one minute. I prayed without stopping. I got lost in the spirit. They had no choice but to sit there and wait and say amen or bow their heads and wait or listen or pray to. One hour and one minute. It's a sacred number for me. One, zero, one. One colon zero one is a sacred number. Every time I see it, I remember that prayer. And God had me break things over the city, over the land, over the people, over situations that are now, things are finally coming through. Some things take a lot of prayer, take very intense prayer to change. And not surface prayer, and not getting distracted by people's issues and situations and demons or whatever. But going in deep in the spirit to get the mind of God and take it from heaven and pull it onto the earth. When you pray like that and begin to prophesy like that and do things like that, things will change. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I want to I have that kind of life too. You can have it. It's not just for me because I'm so gifted and anointed. Yes, of course, God called me. He called me. To him be all the glory. Him. He gave me all this. It's not Thomas. It's Jesus. It's, it's the Holy Ghost. You understand? But you can have it too. What, what am I saying all these things here for? Just for me to pontificate and teach a message? No, all of this is to get into you that you can rise up and live the life that God's ordained. Let me tell you something about the anointing. Those that are anointed are servants of the people. Just like those elected to government are supposed to be servants of the people, but they're not. Many of them are corrupt. They think that the money of the country is for their own pocket. They will burn in hell. Listen to God's servant here. They will burn in hellfire. They're going there. Some that have died, but they didn't have a chance to get saved. That's where they are today, and I can tell you the names of several, even in this country right here. I can tell you their names. One or two of them opposed me. Now they have their place. Lift your hands. They opposed the work of God. They opposed the benefit of the society. Government person is supposed to be a servant of the people. And the church sometimes is corrupt, is corrupt as government people. Some preachers are as corrupt as government people. You think that's okay? It's not okay. There's no heaven for them. But myself, I'm going to heaven. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. Why? Because I live, I live the way I'm supposed to live in God, and I, and I tell the truth. And I live to serve the people to help them come up. Even the children here. Children are smarter than you think. They catch things. I preach sometimes. I see the children in the audience. They're looking at me. They're listening. They're getting what I'm saying. You think they're not, but they are. God wants to raise a whole generation to go into new dimensions of things. 
And he wants everything to change for you. He doesn't want any of this to stay the same. Anything that's here needs to change. This is the formula of blessing and increase. So I began to see, the spirit began to move, and I thought, I said, we need to come out of this local, whatever this local nonsense is, not get too caught up in the things that go on. Come up to a higher place and network internationally and bring fire to the land and walk in a realm of a high place. Let me tell you something about ignorance. Ignorance and the cloud, the demonic cloud that includes poverty, ignorance, limitation, oppression, and all of that. It's all of the devil. We have power over all of that. Can you say amen? amen? But there's three ways you can live. Number one, you can live very poor in a mess. <laughs> and too many people around here live like that. Number two, you can live in a way that you have a little income and you're trying to do better, but you still haven't arrived. And then there's a third way you can live. And I think in the third category, there are many different, uh, cat many segments you can go this level, then this level, then this level, you can go higher and higher. But a place where you live above it all, lift your hands. This is where God is. If you think, oh, he's down in the dirt with the people, stop telling yourself that. In America, they have this thing where <clears throat> uh, people from a certain ghetto community, they'll become like uh, famous. They could become a famous actor. They could be gifted. They can get into Hollywood or they can get into uh, the sports thing and get big jobs that get paid millions of dollars. And they leave the old community and people say, ah, now you think you're important. You're all that, you know, with your new Rolls Royce or whatever, Mercedes Benz. And you don't want to know us. And the guy should say, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm glad I left. Lift your hands. I mean, <laughs> I came from here, but it's like, let me give you a scripture for that. Okay? Look back to the rock and the pit. Do you want to live in the rock and the pit anymore? Or you want to live in the blessing and the increase? So when you get to the point where God delivers you and takes you to a high place, be happy about it. And I'll tell you something else. If you want to embrace a big life, a high life, you need to find someone that's done it and connect with them. And stop dancing around with all the low people. Stop walking with the juniors. Walk with the giants. Lift your hands. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Believe God to get you out of where you've been. Find new friends. Find new contacts. This is the way you kill ignorance. This is the way you kill poverty. This is the way you kill bad living. This is the way you kill oppression. By getting away from it. Last Sunday I was preaching somewhere. And we went in there, and all these demons were manifesting. You know, people, have, people like to play with witchcraft and all that. They do all these. They have all these issues, and everybody's like, ah, you know, demons manifesting. And, and every, people are getting upset about it. I was like, I'm not upset at all. You don't understand me. They gave me the I have my own microphone. They didn't give me the microphone. I turned mine on. This is mine. I carry my own. Thank you very much. I've graduated. I don't need anybody's microphone. I have my own things. I'm good. So switch this on, press the orange button, got up there, and somebody before me was talking about the devil and witchcraft and all that, all this stuff. I thought, ah. The pastor got mad and threw them off the platform. Lift your hands. It was very amusing if you could see. The pastor... The pastor's a prophet. He's a very discerning guy. He used to went and stood up at the pulpit like this, looking like, uh, please get off the stage. You're not doing well. Two things when the preacher comes to stand behind you. Either you're out of time or you're not doing well. <laughs> For me, it's never the second one. <laughs> but I may run out of time, so we have to watch the time clock <laughs> allotted to the service sometimes, you know. But I thought, hey... I was in a meeting and someone did, the, they started, the, the leader started doing this, walking toward, I said, hey, they just stay over there. I, I need another couple of minutes. Don't come up here. Praise the Lord. But I just kind of mean time, time, time. Okay, so. So I, I started to preach and I said, uh, if I were to get up on the microphone and tell you about the devil and all the wrong things, who am I serving? I should resign the ministry. 
Is Jesus the victor? Are we victorious or not? And I said, the only place the devil has is one place that's under our feet. Say praise the Lord. God had me prophesy over this area right here early in the year. And some floods came and washed some of the wishes away. Lift your hands. I just felt sorry for the bad people, uh, the good people, I mean, if they also suffered from those floods. You remember the floods that came here? This place might have even had water in it. I don't know. It might have. It was very bad. But God wanted to wash some things out. We don't have time for the devil and his ugly friends. We're above them. So I'm speaking, and all of a sudden the atmosphere changed. The angels walked in. The Holy Ghost walked in. The presence of heaven filled the place. The video is being released on my YouTube channel. You can see it. The title is called something, Days of Restoration. If you see Days of Restoration, something prophecy, Days of Restoration, that's the message. Watch that one. And uh, I, I don't think it can come across on the video like it did in the atmosphere, but you'll feel it a bit. But in the place, the whole atmosphere changed, and people began to shout. They began to lift their hands. They were catching everything I was saying. It was glorious. And the pastor says, we were so blessed. He says, I want to honor you and bless you. And he gave me like four or five, four times or as a seed what he would normally give. He said, I, and it wasn't, you know, still a lot, a lot, but it was reasonable to show honor. Because he was touched. He says, I want a covenant with you. I want a covenant with this grace. I want to personally sow into this. So he increased his what he was going to give, he did it four times or more. That should happen every day. Lift your hand and say, I'm worth, more than I, I'm worth more than I've been getting. I'm overworked and underpaid. But still it's okay because I'm faithful to the Lord. Be not weary in well-doing, says the Lord. You'll reap in due season if you don't quit. Keep going. Keep doing it. Be a blessing. Keep working. God sees Hebrews 6.10 says, am I un unjust to forget your labor of love? No. Hebrews 10.35 to 38, cast not away your confidence, therefore, for it has recompense of great reward. The just shall live by his faith. Your faith is what will catapult you to the next level. Mark 11.23, speak to the mountain and doubt not. It will obey you and move. Mark 11.24, the things you're believing for, that you desire, the things you desire that you want to have, Pray for them, believing that you receive them and you will have them. John 15, 7, as I say as because I'm doing it. It says if you abide in me, but for me it's not an if, I'm doing it. So for myself, I change the word from if to as. As I'm abiding in him and walking in his word, walking in his ways, now I can ask what I want and I'll have it. Lift your hands. Whatever you really want is available. The f here's a deep thought. The fact that you thought about it is proof it exists. God would be unjust to let you think about something that's impossible to receive. Anything you conceive in your mind, no matter how big it is, you can have it. But guess what? It's not an easy road oftentimes. You got to break things. You got to fight. You got to push. You got to do war. You got to persevere. You got to keep moving. You got to push your way up and cancel some, some lower level things to embrace the higher level things. One thing that's very hard for us humans, myself included, all of us, very difficult. And I hate that it's difficult. I, I wish it would be more easy than it is. Is to let go of everything that's low level, lackluster, and embrace the higher thing. If I could be in the presence of a great person, Lord, take away my fear. Lift your hands. Take away the, the, the feeling that I have that I don't qualify to sit with them. Or I might feel uncomfortable about how great they are and how not great I've not become in a certain area. You have to put all that aside. There's an old saying that's kind of cheeky in the world, fake it till you make it. Yeah, do that. When you're going to sit at the high table, act like you're already there. Don't go all nervous like, I don't deserve to be here. 
You know, there's a whole discourse from Scripture about Lazarus, the beggar who was poor, ended up in heaven, and the rich man who ended up in hell. See, the rich man was sitting at the high table, but he was wicked, but Lazarus was under the table. Remember the Samaritan woman <laughs> when she went to Jesus, and Jesus says, it's not fit for me to give what's for the dogs. <laughs> he called her a dog. Can you believe it? Jesus. He called people snakes. He says, you yoka. Your grandmother's a viper, you generation of vipers, you devil, you whitewashed sepulchers, you hypocrites, you liars, you crooks, you thieves. Uh, yeah, there's a greater place in hell for you. This is the way Jesus talks. Sometimes, sometimes we don't understand. If a preacher talks hard things, but they don't, but you, if you didn't understand him, you won't understand Jesus. He whipped the money changers, yes? He spoke d damnation upon people. Even the scripture says, he that believes in the book of John, is it John chapter 3 somewhere, I think it is. He who believes will be saved, who he does not believe will be condemned. This is, this is the words of Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. He's so nice. Where does it say he's nice? Hello. I'm waiting for the amens to die down. All the amens. Too many amens. Where does it say he's nice? Nice is in France, as nice is on the cookie box, but nice is not in the Bible. The Bible also says the nice guy finishes last. Don't be too nice. He said, be clever as serpents, but harmless as doves. Lift your hands. Say, I need to be clever. You need to sit at the high table. When you get there, don't act like you've never been there before. Act like you got it together. Take your best clothes. Get yourself together. Take a, bat, take a shower. Put on some makeup, you ladies. Fix yourself up. Men... Put on what you got. I, I, lately, I like to wear casual clothes. I show up in some places I shouldn't even show up the way I'm dressed. I'll show up in a track suit, gym suit. I don't care, but I shouldn't do that. But some places, you, you can't arrive like that. You, you have to get dressed. And I don't wear a suit and a tie. Your British colonial system, they made you wear jackets and ties. I don't wear jackets and ties. I have tailor-made clothes, but the, I have ones that are elegant enough that I look like I'm formal when it's only a two-piece thing, and I have many more being made, so I'm, I'm kind of worn out with the ones I have. <sighs> I have about 40 or 50 new suits I'm gonna make now. I have some tailors gonna work on that, yeah. And then every day for two months, a month and a half, I wanna be able to put on a different outfit and never wear the same thing twice. I'm gonna, I'll be there in a few, some days. So we're getting some new ones done. I'm waiting on some tailors and some time to do all that now but some places you just need to dress for success can I tell you 80% of success is just showing up at the right place the other 20% don't worry about it it'll work itself out you could be a good person listen to me you could be a good person in the wrong place and be messed up you could almost be a bad person in a good place and you'll get blessed you're in the right environment something good will happen for you even if you're not great but if you're great and in the wrong place, your greatness can't operate there. Why? Because of all the foolishness of people. So we need to change our environments. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, there's no way I, I could talk all day. How many, how many understand that already? You know, I can talk till tomorrow and not stop. Lift your hands. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the increase of your grace, increase of your might and power, increase of your wisdom, increase of your knowledge, increase of your understanding. Give us your favor. Open the doors. Thank you for the opportunities. Paint our mind. Take all fear out of our hearts. Let us never fear men. The man who fear, fear brings a snare. It's terrible. Procrastination is tied to fear. I put it off because I'm afraid to attack it today. The Lord says, no, everything you could do today, do today. Whatever's going to be for tomorrow, don't wait till tomorrow for something you could do today. And don't worry about yesterday, as the scripture so clearly says, to forget the former things. Don't look back. Look ahead. Take what you're doing today and say, what can I, how can I, I can't regret or lament and cry about yesterday. It's terrible, but I have to have the grace to forget it. Let me think about tomorrow. The future is really not a reality because today is today. Tomorrow, when we get there, we'll rename it today. So is there really a future? That's, there isn't. There's, there's today and tomorrow. Today, I, what I do today, when I get to tomorrow, I'm going to rename it today. Yesterday's in the tomb. Tomorrow's in the womb. But today is the day that I can do something to give birth to the great thing in the next day, in the next hour. 
And there's a, there's a name in the Bible called Manasseh, M-A-N-A-S-S-E-H, a prophetic name. In the Hebrew definition of the word Manasseh, the name Manasseh means the Lord made me to forget my trouble. Lay your hands on yourself right now and say, Lord, help me to forget. Help me to forgive. I forgive everybody. Unforgiveness is a terrible thing. The root of bitterness is a terrible thing. We've all dealt with that. You got to get it out of you. That you'll be happy. The only, but, but I'll tell you something. In a practical way, because I don't like to just talk about the, that part and say, praise the Lord, that's how it is, embrace it. I want to tell you how. I want to give you a how. I want to give you a practical uh, realm and tip of understanding, a step to take. When you are going to feel happy, really, truly happy is based on good happenings. When the things you want are happening... When you see things happening in a positive way, it makes you feel happy. I, I, that's kind of my makeup. I'm like that. If things are not working, I'm very frustrated. If I ever seem irritated or irritable or not happy or not talkative, it's, there's a reason. Just leave me alone. Pray for me. Because I'm birthing something. I'm breaking out of where we are now. We're getting into the next thing. Praise the Lord. Someone said, I, I understand peace and joy, as Jesus said, but I don't know about this other. I said, okay, well, that's your thought. My thought is happiness is based on happenings. It's a writing I've said, and I stick to it. I'm the author of that statement. Thomas Manton IV, that's my quote. You can quote me on that. Happiness is based on good happenings. It's even the same word, happiness, happenings. Do you see how it's the same word? H-A-P-P-I. Happy, N, nings, happiness. It's the same word. You're only changing the last three letters, I-N-G-S. No, N-G-S or E-S-S. Happen, happen means, <laughs> you look at the root word, happen. Something good happened. Something bad happened. So what? Move past it. Praise the Lord. Killing the spirit of ignorance. Killing the spirit of poverty. Killing the spirit of oppression. Killing the, ra the lack of direction. Learning how to walk in the ways of blessing and increase and fa the favor of God. Knowing how to please him. Knowing how to please him that he takes a liking to you. And he says, I want to help you because I like your heart. I like your attitude. I like your passion for me. You know what I'm passionate about? I'm not really passionate about the church. The church, the people, yes. But church, uh, for the way it goes, not all the time. I'm happy about, uh, well, let me say, I'm passionate about, I'm zealous about what's going to come forth that's going to bring people into a realm of change and blessing. And empowerment, enlightenment, elevation, illumination, revelation, enhancement, assistance, impartation, impact, change, activation. Are you getting all the words? That give you deter more determination. You understand? I need to persevere through all the darkness. Can I tell you, there's light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't matter how dark it looks. There's, there's light. Why? Because there's the purpose of God. And the way you find it is only one thing. You can't, people preach like that, you know, be encouraged, you know, praise the Lord, we win. I know, I know, it's, it's, it's elementary. But how? How am I going to win? By taking action on what God said to do. Lift your hands. Whoa, that's hot right there. How am I going to win? How am I going to walk in victory? By taking action, severe, drastic action. Today, this hour, new, new things that I didn't do yet yesterday, I'm going to start to do today. Make the, make the phone call that you didn't want to make before. Call the person that's of a high level. And don't worry if you can't reach them. Be persistent. Go find them.
So I have a guy that's a king, a man that's a king. He's a literal king from a country. He's a very wealthy man. He's a king, a king, a real king. And I couldn't reach him by phone, so how I do is I just go appear at his place. <laughs> and somebody thought that wasn't uh, the right thing to do. I don't know. That's the way I know. If I can't, I can't get them on the phone, I show up. And a king is taught to be hospitable to, to guests. So when you knock on the door of a king, they're supposed to, by custom, say, come in, sit down, let the servants come bring you a cup of tea. What's on your mind? Ha <laughs> ha, okay. They'll do that. But if you call them on the phone and says, can I come? Can I have an appointment? They may say no. I'm busy. So why do that? Just show up. So I did that. I'm going to do that again next week when they return. They're in Thailand. They're coming back. I'm going to go see them. You know, That's how it is. Find the person that knows what you don't know. Lift your hand. Find the person who has something you want to have, but you're not going to be jealous of them, undermining and hating them. You're going to love them and embrace them, honor them, bring them a gift, smile at them, talk nicely to them, ask them questions. People always want to be hospitable to someone that's a pleasant experience. If you're going to be a pleasant, beneficial experience for someone, they'll embrace you. I'm like that. It doesn't matter where I am, how busy I am, what I'm doing. If somebody's brilliant and there's a moment to be had, I want that moment. If it's a moment that is not pleasant, it's going to waste my time or bring something else that's not right, I don't want it. Anytime, anytime. That's some preacher in London, very arrogant, you know. <laughs> I called him on the phone. I had his number and I said, when can we meet? He said something under his breath like never. When's a good time? He said never. I, I never called him again. I thought, you have no interest in talking to me. I have no interest in meeting with you. Goodbye. And I never saw him. That was 15, no. That was 20 years ago. I've never seen him since then. I don't care what he's doing. Whatever. So not every connection is one you're supposed to get. But I want to tell you a principle. Those you hate... Uh, will we'll never open the treasure to you. If you hate somebody, you can't receive from them. When you see somebody becoming successful, don't hate them, even if you don't like everything about them. Just say to God, God, give me the grace. There's something they know that I don't know. There's something they've figured out that I need to really, I really need to figure it out and use the knowledge that they have that I can gain understanding too and I'll get past my get past your pride your ego your bitterness and people like to gossip stop gossiping about people shut up with that don't do it it, it offends god two things that offend god an evil tongue a negative report two the third thing is complaining don't complain. And a fourth thing is don't be like, feel like you're a victim. Take responsibility for your life. It's painful, but stop blaming other people. People were evil. They did evil things. People hurt you. Oh, yes, they did. People stole from you. Yes, they did. People maligned you. People undermined you. People were jealous of you. People wanted to see you suffer. Yes, they did. Trash heaps that they are in reality. But you can't look at them and say... You did this to me. No, you got to get past that and say, Father, whatever I did to allow that in my life, I am truly sorry. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, I'm trying to help you. I'm truly sorry that I was such a fool that I allowed this. Now, please never let it happen again. And when you speak and when you give me wisdom, I'm going to move. And then the ultimate prayer after that, get that fixed. Get that out of your soul. Get that out. That, get that... Uh, dark toxin and pollution out of you get it out let it let the holy ask the holy spirit make it demand that he washes it away that you be free that you could be happy joyful let, let me just talk about the joy and the peace for a minute because that's different than happiness 
Happiness is based on happenings. Things going good, I'm happy. Things not going good, I don't feel happy. Yes? Are we clear on that? That's kind of a, it's very realistic, right? But there's the supernatural thing that God gives, the peace and the joy. <laughs> I was listening to an a Indian preacher on Tuesday night that came from India, and he said, you didn't have the peace, uh, and you didn't have the joy, but you went to Jesus, and he gave you the peace, and he gave you the joy. I was really laughing at the accent, you know. I fell down at his feet and I started the crying because I need the peace and the joy and I have to receive it from Jesus. Yes, that's true. Supernatural. So, you know, sometimes it doesn't matter where you are. God can supernaturally bless you with his peace. Supernaturally bless you that you feel joy anyway in spite of the storm and the nonsense and all the things going on. But in reality, we need to get cleansed of everything that's afflicting us, and then we need to start to pray the next major prayer, which is the bottom line, the major point, and say, now, Lord, what do I do? Show me what to do next. Can I tell you, the only thing you always need to know all the time is this what to do next it's the major thing above everything else in life that you need to know what do i do now what do i do next every millisecond twinkling twinkling of an eye flash of light millisecond psh, 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 less than a second what do i do now what do i do now the brain works on impulses of what your you know the things that happen inside of you, the process of thought. That's why it's so important, as this old man of God said, a great man of God from the, uh, the big church in England. He's been in the ministry 70 years. I, I know him. I met him. He's a very, very wonderful guy. He said, know the word and apply it in your life because it renews the mind. How can a young man cleanse his way, Psalm 119, by taking heed according to his word? In the beginning was the Word, yes? John 1, 1. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And to as many as received him, verse 12, he gave, the power, he gave them power to become the sons of God. The earth is groaning and travailing for the manifestation of the sons. A son is a mature one who understands, who has wisdom, who has power. And many of the church are not walking there. Have I helped you yet? Lift your hands. This is just a round one, so we, we don't have all day, but we'll say all that we can in this session. How to take heed according to the word. How to begin to ask God to forgive you and cleanse you from everything wrong that's ever happened. And you forgive people that were the most criminal, that were the most evil. Don't keep hating uh, grudges and bitterness in you about them. You can't. It's deadly to you. Can I tell you what forgiveness is? Forgiveness is a gift that Jesus gave to us. Forgiveness Forgiveness doesn't absolve the guilty from their guilt, but it frees you from them. Forgiveness is a gift that we give to ourselves. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I forgive everybody. It doesn't matter what they did. God will judge them. They're in God's hands. In fact, the higher level that many of us haven't even got to yet is to pray for their well-being. I don't know sometimes how to do that. You pray for an evildoer's well-being when he did the most horrible things. She did the most horrible things. How on earth do you pray for them to be blessed and to be good? And I don't know. Sometimes that's a higher, that's a higher learning, <laughs> Under, a higher level of understanding. But let us get there in Jesus' name. Be free from everything wrong. 
It's hard to say it because it's, it's, it, feels, uh, it feels painful to say. But men and devils are evil in this world. And they'll do evil things, but you can't let it affect you. And any mistake that you've had in your life, get past it. Take responsibility. Lay your hands on your heart right now. Say, Lord, I'm not going to blame anybody ever again. This is good teaching here. I'm never going to blame anybody again for my situations. I have to take responsibility for myself. Now show me, Lord, what I need to do now. Without your direction, I don't know what to do. Without your direction, I can't get done what you want to, to be done. So help me, Father. Help me today. Illuminate my mind. Show me who to call. Show me who to leave alone. Show me what to focus on. Show me what to forget about. Show me what to plan in my schedule. Show me where to go and show me where not to go. Show me who to leave alone and not give any time to and show me who to embrace and give my time to. Show me where I can benefit. Show me the environment. Bring me there, the places where I can benefit in life, where things can begin to happen for the purpose and calling that you put upon my life. In the name of Jesus, for surely, Father, you have uh, commissioned me commission all of us to do great things but we're responsible now for that commission we need to get it done father show me who it's going to be that's going to help us yes lord i'm seeing this and the other part of this message is the dream team that what, what people call the destiny helpers there was a prophetic word that was released yesterday about that i said this is this is worth the whole trip to come here and have this meeting to hear that the fact that the lord would say is god's bringing the right people we're coming to them, we're finding them, and they're finding us. The best of the best. TBOTB is an acronym for the best of the best. The best kind of people, the made people, the brilliant people, the people that know what to do. Some people stand around, they have no direction. I don't understand. You need to fix that within yourself. Ask God for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Ask God for common sense. Ask God to be, become a leader, to make good decisions. And to flow and solve problems and get things done and fix everything around. And don't look at something and leave it there and say, well, this is just like that. That's how it is. No, you're supposed to change it. I gave two people an assignment. Uh, I won't talk in details about it. But I said, your assignment for me now is to fix this whole thing. And make it the way it needs to be. Just do it. Let me go and inspect what they've done, what they've done, and then we'll adjust things as we go. Everything needs to be in order. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He's a God of order. I, I thought we would uh, challenge people to sow a certain seed. I feel like, I feel these days I don't even have energy for it, and I don't know why. If it's uh, any kind of oppression in the spirit or limitation, I break it in Jesus' name. But I just want to speak a word that everybody should sow a great seed. Let me give you a promise on your seed sowing today into this anointing that's standing here. Isaiah 48, 17. The Lord spoke to me yesterday. Isaiah 48, 17. Write this down. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. Everything you're doing should ex excel and succeed. All you people and partners online, many I've not heard from. Many people have been watching the messages, and I'm seeing some people, uh, names that I haven't recognized before, finding our number, and you're sending offerings. You could also use PayPal. I know in the African continent, people don't use it so much, but it's a very good system of giving. Western Union, MoneyGram, then there's SendWave and World Remit, where you can send direct to the phone. The information will be on the screen. And I'll give everybody here a phone number if you'd like to do electronic and electronic giving by M-Pesa. You can sow a seed that way. But I want you to sow according to this scripture, Isaiah 48, 17. Write that down. I am the Lord your God. God spoke through Isaiah, who will teach you how to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Teach you how to profit, even through the prophet. 
and lead you in the way you should go. I feel the presence of the Lord. You can match it with a number. If it's 5,000 shillings, you can do it. If you want to sow 1,000, 2,000, you want to sow something like that, you say, I can. I'm believing God for big things. I want to sow a seed. But everybody do the best you can. Don't continue thinking that your 100 shilling seed, 250 is a big deal. I just told you this week I sowed 2 million. So what's wrong with me or right with me? I asked God this morning, you think I'm satisfied? Oh, I did something big. I told the Lord last night, I was walking in my kitchen around in my house, and I said, Lord, I'm just operating according to your word. I need the harvest. And I said this morning, I woke up with fire, said, show me what else I can sow. I was sitting outside in the car before I came in here. And I was praying there for a couple of minutes. I said, you don't know what I'm praying about, my soul. I'm praying all the time. Paul said, pray without ceasing. I live like that. When do you have your prayer meetings? I don't know, all the time. <laughs> I'm praying in the night. I'm praying in the day. I'm hearing God. God's talking to me. I'm talking to him all through the day. And I like the formal time. Let's have a prayer meeting where we're just going to go to pray. I, li I think that's important. But we should also be praying all the time. Can you say amen? You can talk to the Lord all the time. You don't have to have a church service. You don't have to have a special meeting with people. You could just be talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, show me what else I can sow. Anything else I have, talk to me. And this thing that I had was worth over 2 million shillings. Over $15,000. I was holding on to it. And I said, no, I'm going to give it away. I need the harvest more than I need that. And I sowed it. Two million is my seed. Any seed I wanted to sow, credit it toward that. Anything I'm tithing or giving offerings or alms or anything in the biblical economic order, Take that two million and apply it, angels, accountants, apply it to that. And let my accounts be filled with uh, uh, an overflow in the higher realm of that it's all seed. And I claim the harvest back in Jesus' name. The proper harvest on that would be hundreds of millions. I take it. And that's even small. Can I tell you, in America, we have some very smart people that have learned the word, the word of God, the word of God. And they, I tried to tell one Kenyan man, I think he didn't understand me at all, so I kind of wonder why, why I called him and told him all this. But I did it. We'll leave it with him. To understand the system of giving, it's a very powerful thing. I know one man, he's on top now. He's walking in millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. He was given a private jet. He was, people bought property worth millions of dollars for him. One miracle after another. He's a phenomenon. People said, is that guy special? Does God love him more than any other evangelist or pastor? People could think that. But you know what? He tells his story. He's very militant about telling what he gives. And some people think he shouldn't do it. But I, I said, anything in me that's shy about that, I got to come out of that and begin to talk to people. You may come into something that you have something that's two million or a million. And say, Lord, I want to take this as a holy seed and sow it. You may come into a deal or there's some property that you had or there's some items that you had or a vehicle you had or something you had that can sell for a lot of money. You take it and sell it, sow the money, or sow the thing. I don't know. But live to sow, and you'll see the harvest coming back. And this man, he got, he got rich by doing that. Every, in fact, every preacher, he also doesn't run a business. He preaches seven days a week, like I do. He's preaching seven days a week. That's what he does. He's not selling things and running companies. Yeah, they have their investments, and they do the markets and the all that 
other stuff. I don't even want to mention all the names because I don't want to get your minds off the topic of the word here. If I start talking about things in the markets, I, your mind will go there. I don't want to take you there. I want to, I want to keep you right here. Give, Jesus said, Luke 6.38, and seven harvests come back. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men, four, give unto your bosom, five, and six, at the same measure that you measure out, seven, the same measure will be measured back to you again. The thing that you sow, it, claim it, what harvest do you want? You have to sow a seed for that. People think, oh, yeah, this is the thing the preachers do, you know, like to, oh, stop, 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 stop. Don't go there. Don't go there. If anyone's going to go there in their mind, please keep what you have. And forget I ever spoke to you. Because I, I, we're not like that. We're not about that. We want to teach people how to prosper. How to be in good, walk in power. Can you say Amen. Walk in riches in the midst of the storm. Walk above the storm. Walk in the high places of being blessed and prosperous in the midst of poverty and degradation. Lift your hands. You could do that right here where you are. And by the way, once you get some money flowing in your life, one of the first things you should do is move from where you are. Go. Find another place. Go somewhere. Set up your garden. Set up your house. Get the things you need. Live a good life and say, now I'm where I'm supposed to be. That mess I was in over there... Is a thing of the past. Look back to that thing that I took you out of. But now I'm going to catch you to myself and increase you and bless you. Say amen. amen. How does it happen? Does it happen because we prayed? No, prayer doesn't give you harvest on seed. You understand? Seed, time, and harvest. Genesis, I think I'm getting energy for this now. I was wondering. Father, if there's any demon that's blocking the way of any flow in the realm of the biblical economic system and to teach people about fight, because some people I just kind of, I gave up on some people, I'll just be honest. Some of these pastors that try to run money into their own pockets, but when a preacher, a prophet shows up, they want to give him almost nothing and insult him and insult God. It gets disgusting after a while. You just say, ah, I don't even want to bother with it now. I don't want to even talk to the people. That's a demonic distraction. But guess what? God will judge those pastors. Lift your hands. Right here in Nairobi, right here in your town, they're all up and down the street. They're all up and down the highway. They're over in that area. I preach for many of them. They keep doing that. They're going to account to God. But me, I'm blessed because I'm his servant, and I come to teach people the truth, and I come to talk to the body of Christ. doesn't matter what they do, but I, I'm not going to be affected by it. No matter how bad it is. Lift your hands. You, you can't have a profit. You say, well, we don't, how much money do we have? Take what you have. Do something generous. Hurt yourself. Inconvenience yourself. You, people have money for everything else. Whatever you have money for. Someone comes up with a bill. I got to pay 20000 for this. I got to pay house rent, school fees. I got to go shop. shop. I got to pay for this. I got to pay for that. You, 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 you pay for that like it's nothing, right? Even the pastors, they do that for themselves, yes? But, oh, no, we see the American man, you know? He must have a lot, so we're going to rip him off and give him nothing. We just keep that. You stingy little demon from hell, standing in the pulpit in front of God's people like you're all that. No, open your treasure and give. You want to live like Solomon? <laughs> you want to give like Solomon. David was mad. Let me give you a Bible. David was upset because God told him you can't build the temple. He said, what? I wanted to do that. God said, I'm going to choose Solomon, your son, to do it. David said, oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh, Lord. I'm, I'm hurt. I'm hurt. I'm, I, I wanted to build this. You said, I can't build it. Oh, my God. This, it's painful. It's terrible. So David, what did he do? He's a wild giver. You know what he did? You know what he did? Do you know what he did? Say what? He went and got some more treasure to pay for it. Lift your hands. He said, I can't build it with my hands. Whew. 
You say I'm a bloody man? Well, I'll go do more of that to get the spoils and I'll pay for the temple. You're not telling me that I can't pay for it. Notice God never told him he couldn't pay for it. But God told him you can't touch the walls with your hands. Because I don't want the arena of the bloodshed, of the warrior, of the killer in the walls of my house. You see that? There's, if you think about it, there's, you could see, you could almost understand why God would say that. But to pay for it, God put no restriction on David. Some people, you want to live in big ways. You want to connect. You want to be like, can I tell you, if you want to be like Job, like not, not the bad part that Job had, the good part. Job was a multi-billionaire. Abraham was a multi-billionaire. Solomon was a trillionaire. David was a multi-billionaire. Jehoshaphat was a multi-billionaire. U.S. dollars, not shillings. U.S. dollars. Abraham was worth over 200 billion U.S. dollars. Solomon's temple was 500 billion dollars. David, you look at Chronicles. Read Chronicles. Know your Bible. Study it. First Chronicles 29. Look at the, what they all gave. David said, I'm going to give millions of dollars of gold to this. And all of his leaders began to follow suit and follow him and said, My, our leader, our father David did this. So we're also going to open our treasuries and give. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting into something here. Lift your hands right now. I'm back. I'm back. Back in the New York groove is an old song like that. I'm back. I'm back. I'm going to help people understand these things. Oh, yes. Yeah, you only have so many minutes, so I have to preach for you, drop the microphone, then you insult God on, on our way out. Why? No, it's the wrong system. Let us talk to the people and tell them how to live. If I be a prophet of God, and I am, all the things that we're saying will come to pass for you like it came to pass for others. If you embrace the heritage of your, of your, of your uh, the biblical fathers, not the church fathers, wherever you are, some of them are good, some of them are not, the good ones you can follow. Like my dear uh, friend, Archbishop Harrison Nanga, he's a good man. By the way, he wrote the foreword to my book, published his book for me. I honor him. He's a real servant of God, that one. He's a real man of God. A man like him, you could, you can follow his lead. And a few others, but not too, they're not too many. But the fathers of the faith, the biblical fathers, who? Moses, Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, Jehoshaphat, Job, and Abraham, my God, David and Solomon. Lift your hands. It's, hard. it's a hard thing. You know, it's like when Elijah, Elisha said to Elijah, I want a double portion of your spirit. He says, I mean, you can have it, but it's, you're asking a hard thing. I feel like that same thing, like I'm asking a hard thing when I say, let the life, let the power empowerment of wealth W-E-L-T-H. W-E-A-L-T-H. Wealth is a word that comes from the old English word wheel. W-E-A-L. It's an old English word. W-E-A-L. And from the word wheel, W-E-A-L, we get the word wealth. We also get the word well. W-E-L-L. -L. It is well with you. You ever hear people in the church say it is well? I, I want to ask back, what's well? What? Tell me what. Tell me something. They don't know what to say. It is well. It is well. <laughs> what? What do you mean it's well? Is that going to do something for me? People come up and ask me the question, are you well? And they put the, the emphasis on the L's at the end. Are you well? Are you well? I'm like, get away from me. What am I supposed to say? No. Of course I am. I'm great 24 hours a day. I have no choice. That's the nature of God in me. Say amen. amen. What kind of stupid question is that? It is well. Are you well? Stop talking like that. Lift your hands. Get to the point. Say, hey, how's it going? What's going on? Tell me. What's going on in your life? What's good? What have you learned? What can I learn from you? What can you learn from me? What can we do? What can get done? Work on being a problem solver. Cut out all the other stuff. 
I know the Brits, they indoctrinated you well with all their colloquial ways. You have to be polite. Then you got to come up to people. Everybody has to shake your hand and have to say, are you well? I'm looking at them. Could you please stop wasting time? I'm from New York. You know, we're very different. You know, a New York minute is like eight seconds. A New York minute, 60 seconds, is like eight seconds. People in New York are like, huh, hi, what, what? They don't even say hello. If you say hello to someone in New York too much, they look at you like you're strange, like, are you okay? Well, what's wrong with you? Are you, how are you, how are you? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm trying to solve a problem right now. I'm trying, to get to, I'm trying to get through the day. What do you mean, how am I doing? Do you see the folly of all this kind of stuff? We take time on that. Someone from the South in America called me one time. They have this thing. You have to say, hello, how are you? How's your family? I'm like, oh, my God, I'm tired by the time I finish saying hello. Lift your hands. Say, praise the Lord. Then I said, okay, thanks, and I hung up. They called me back. In the old days when we, had, we didn't have cell phones then, we had the old uh, landline phone. They rang back. I picked up. I said, hi. They said, you hung up on me. I said, no, I didn't. So I thought we were done. And I said, okay, thanks. I hung up again. They called back again, said, you, you, you keep disconnecting the phone, you keep hanging up. I had to think for a minute. I said, okay, now what's the problem here? I said, okay, you know, my friend, have a wonderful day. Say hi to the family. Praise the Lord. I pray you have a great week. You know how to do all that, you know, now. And then after that, I said, are you happy now? Oh, yes. Thank you. Goodbye. Be blessed. Have a nice day. Then I waited for them to hang up first. You see all the time that that took? That it doesn't even produce anything? Lift your hands. Time. Every second goes by. Even me telling that story took um, uh, 60 seconds of time to make a point that needs to be made. Everything is time. What, let's look at what Jesus said. Let's, let's be biblical people. Biblical. The biblical reality, Jesus says, redeem the time for the days are evil. He said, work while it's day because the night comes when no man can work anymore. The wise, foolish, wise and foolish versions, Matthew 25. When the door was shut, the foolish ones who didn't fill their lamps couldn't get no more oil. And they lost the opportunity. So time, tick tock, said the clock, tick tock, tick tock. Not the social media thing, but the clock, tick tock. The old clocks, they make the sound. Your heartbeat's going, beat, 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 beat. What are you doing with the moment? Praise the Lord. Okay. Now I want to tell you a key. I want to continue on this for a second. Do you? can get rich without the labor. Whew. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, you're going to think, is this like, is this real? Is this like, what are you going to tell me? No, by sowing seed. Sowing seed and God begins to give you the harvest. You didn't work for that thing. God just caused it to come back to you. And he said, I'll give you a thousand, I'll make you a thousand times more. Two places in the scripture, Isaiah 60, 22 and Isaiah 111. Deuteronomy 111, excuse me. Deuteronomy 111, I'll make you a thousand times more than you are. Isaiah 60, 22, a little one will become like a thousand. A small one like a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. But he said in Genesis 8, 22, the scripture said, Moses wrote this. Genesis 8, 22, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease. When you sow, you'll reap. Jesus said one word, give. Just do it. Give, 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 sow, S-O-W, sow. Put it out of yourself. Take it from your hand. Can I tell you, when something leaves your hand, it doesn't leave your life. Lift your hands. It goes into the soil that you're planting into, especially if it's anointed. And it's rich soil. And it will be watered and fertilized and grown up to produce a harvest. 
It leaves your hand, but it doesn't leave your life. It comes back again into your other hand in abundance. This is a secret that most people in the church, they, they've misunderstood it. It's been mi misused by people. It, what people call the prosperity gospel or whatever. There's no prosperity gospel. There's only one gospel. Get that out of your mind. Take your Bible. Hold it up. Hit yourself with it. That's strong. Hit yourself with it. You feel some pain. Hit just, this is it right here. Do I believe this or I don't believe it? What the old man said 70 years in the ministry, he said, he said, know the word and cultivate something else I need to add that I almost forgot that he said. Cultivate your belief in the word and apply it to life and it will work for you. This is my advice to any young minister. He's in his late 80s. He's pushing. He's almost 90 years old. He's been preaching for 70 years. Seven zero. Seven decades. And he's a great and reputable, brilliant thinker. Great pastor. Great. Known all over the world. Written bestseller books. This is what he said. Know the word. Know the word. Cultivate and grow your belief in it. And apply it to your life. And everything will go well for you. Lift your hands. I challenge you. Make a note of this scripture. Isaiah 48, 17. Those of you watching online, God bless you that are there. That's why we record so everybody can see. Get a special seed according in honor of that. If it's 4,817 according to the scripture, that's okay. Or any part thereof. You want to sow 5,000, you want to sow 48, 17, you want to sow 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. Make it something that you feel that it's a, a seed, a real seed. The best you can do and sow it into this offering right now. Those online, the, the ways to do it will be there. I want to give the, the phone number. I'm closing this session right here in a few seconds now. 0706. Make a note of this. Take your phone. you got a pen, brother. I love you. You're writing it down. Thank you. You're so brilliant. Thank you for writing notes. God bless your son. 0706. 164 191. 0706. 164 191. You can sow by M-Pesa. If you're out of the country, you can get the SendWave app. Send it right to the phone from anywhere in the world. World Remit is another one. I know people in South Africa like to use that a lot. Western Union to Thomas Manton, Nairobi, Kenya. That's all you need. And then send us the control number if you want to send cash from any of the Forex bureaus anywhere in the world. PayPal.me. It'll be on the site. PayPal.me forward sign Thomas Manton. It's very easy. PayPal. Dot me, me, paypal.me, forward sign, Thomas Manton, T-H-O-M-A-S-M-A-N-T-O-N, and you can use the PayPal app. If someone has a large seed and you'd like our bank details, write me a direct message personally and I'll tell you how to do it. Because some people are coming into some things. You know, the Lord spoke to me. Some people are coming into great blessings that have been listening to you and following the, your anointing, following the, the anointing I put upon you, following the teachings for a long time. And they've been out there from looking from afar, but all of a sudden they're coming in. And one day they're just going to appear and give the phone call and say, Prophet, uh, you, you may not know me or remember me, but I've been listening to you. And I got blessed. And I had, the Lord said, I have to take a part of this and sow it into your grace, into your anointing. I, give, I want to give everybody the opportunity. I haven't always done this, but I feel the liberty here. And I tell you, this is something we need to do all the time. Let the people sow. Let the people sow. Let me get out of the way of God and the people. Let the pastor get out of the way of God and the people. Our job, my job as a prophet, your pastor's job as a pastor, is to take you to Jesus. Yes, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Then when the people are being drawn, 
We don't need to get in the way. We need to just let God flow. Do you know even the prism of light in the ten colors, the colors, the beautiful colors that flow through a transparent glass when the sun hits it, it's transparent. The light comes, hits the glass, and then all the colors come out the other side. That's supposed to be us. Transparent vessels where God comes through to the people. Lift your hands. Do you appreciate that? Have you felt that in this service? We're here to teach truth, to empower you. Nothing else. No hype. No emotional drama. No screaming and shouting and carrying on. No wrestling with demons. You know, the demons are gone. By the way, when I show up, they run. They see the Holy Ghost. Not just me. They see the Holy Ghost of the angels. They take off. By the way, I'll tell you, I feel it in the spirit. You could feel it too. The atmosphere is, uh, is better right now than when we began. Why? Because the whole time I've been speaking, the presence of God has been moving here. You watching where you are. You're going to feel better, do better, get better after listening to me for the last hour, however many minutes we've been talking. Why? Because of the presence of God. <coughs> so why should we take time on that? Let's get the gospel, the real truth to the people. There's some books in the back. Uh, if anybody's sewing a thousand or more, uh, uh, you can also have a gift of my book. Those of you that are here, if you're going to sew a thousand or more, uh, which is a seed, and you'd like to get the book, you'll have to tell us. Don't get mad if we left and you didn't get it. You have to remind us. Come talk to somebody at the back table and say, I'm sewing a thousand. Show them. Give them the cash or sew them. Thank you. Well, I'll, make sure you, I'll make sure you get one. You can't have mine. It's my master copy because I'm preaching with this. But Somebody give me a book from the back. Bring it to this gentleman. Okay. You're dressed well enough. You could be on the camera. Give her a hand clap. Doesn't she look beautiful? Oh, Lord. Princess. Queen. By the way, I'll tell you, in God's mind, we're his royalty. Lift your hands. You're not a poor beggar. You're a queen if you're a woman. You're a king if you're a man. And all the babies are princes and princesses. And I ask you this question. Can a king be poor? Someone shout no. Say no to the devil. Can a queen be a poor woman? A king and a queen has a palace to rule from. I want to ask you, where's your palace? Where? <laughs> Where is your, amen, pastor. Where is your palace? Lift your hands. Say, Lord, I'm going to create it in the spirit. I, I, I don't know the address or the, maybe I don't have the title deed to the property. I don't, but I'm going to get it. So, come on, come on. From today, let me open up your imagination. Those of you that are sowing into this anointing, when you sow, God sees your seed. He goes, ah, I want to unlock something to you. That, this gentleman sowed a thousand. There's somebody else. Just come running as I'm talking and just put it here. We'll make sure you get one of the books. If you want to sell more than that, you can do it. Now's the time to do it. Those of you online, take note of the information and send your seed. By the way, all the way to the ends of the earth, I have these in digital format. I can send you the e-books. And I have two others. I have the Laws of Success and I have the Benefits of Excellence, also an e-book. If you become a good partner... By sewing, and I see your name and your seriousness of sewing, I'm going to send you as my gift all three books as digital copies. The others are sold out of the physical printing. I have this one available where we are right now, the city we're in, where we are here. Physically, the other ones will go to reprint, but I have them in digital. If you're a partner, I'm going to send you all three books, but you have to remind me, please. And don't get mad, say, well, you mentioned it, and then I didn't get the book. Please remind me. Please. I'm busy. Please. Please. I want to do it. If I haven't done it yet, and you are one to receive, please remind me. Okay? Pray in the Holy Ghost. There has to be someone else that's going to bust this demon that's going to be oppressing you with a special seed. Get out of your seat and come up here and put it here while I'm standing here, because in 60 seconds, I'm off the platform. Don't miss the moment. Do it right now. I want to challenge you. Do it right now. 
Thank you. Make sure she gets one, so I'm going to give her a book. Now, uh, I love the scripture in Philippians that Paul said, I don't desire you to give that is for my account for, or, or for me. Not that I desire a gift from you, but that fruit would abound to your account. Pastors teach the people that. That when they tithe, they open the windows of heaven. Malachi 3, 8 to 12. When you tithe, you open the windows of heaven for yourself. The man teaching it to you is a representative of God. He's just telling you what the Bible said. That's all. Take it and work with it. It's for you. And like I said, when you give, you're giving to yourself. Don't consider that someone's taking something from me. I have another teaching I did about three weeks ago. It's on my YouTube channel. The YouTube link will be there on the screen. You can all see it. You can go to the YouTube channel. About killing the spirit of the taker, this taking spirit. Everybody wants to take, take, take. They don't want to give, give, give. But giving is the way out. It's, I think it's one of the best kept secrets that many people don't know about. Or again, it's been m misused. Hallelujah. Monkeys? I don't know. Something. Somebody. Or a person fell from the sky. Or somebody was walking on the roof and was drunk. I don't know what happened. Or the monkeys. Uh, something's going on here. Praise the Lord. It's all, it's all very exciting, isn't it? But you need to understand the way to get rich. I want to help you. Without labor, give to God. If you have something valuable that you don't need or you feel that God would talk to you about sowing, find the place to sow it. Doesn't matter if it's to me. It could be anywhere. Just follow God. Follow God. Be a generous person and you'll live well. Let me give you a verse for that. Uh, uh, Proverbs 11.25. Proverbs 11.25 said, put it on the screen if you can, gentlemen. Proverbs 11.25. It says in, the, I think it's the New Living Translation, one of the modern English translations, which I really like. It, it better than the King James. It says, a generous person will have, will become like a well-watered garden. The life of a generous giver will become like a well-watered garden. God calls your life a garden to flourish and grow. Lift your hands. Think about it. All the things you desire, you can have. Everything you want to see happen can happen. Begin to take action. I've given you some steps on that. We'll see you all again. I love you very much. I'm Thomas Manton the Ford. Let's give the Lord a praise right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Act excited like you're. Do like this. Yeah. And say, Lord, I receive your word. I receive the teachings. I receive the, I receive the revelations. I receive your scripture and truth. Into my world from today, things will change for me. And help me, Holy Ghost, to take action on everything I'm hearing. Help me to know what to do and let me put my feet forward and move to the place that I've always wanted to be but never got to yet. Lift your hands. Let's stand on our feet, everybody. Stand on our feet. Let's pray. Shakarente de sai tashila tai te so. Farante de sai tashila tai te. Father, everybody under the sound of this voice, anointed. Yeah, the generous soul will be made rich. New King James is also good. And he or she, of course, it's a woman to a man or a woman. He or she who waters something or someone will also be watered themselves. Yeah. And another translation in the modern English translation says that your life will become like a garden that's well watered, well cultivated. Everything will grow. How many want to have a life like that? How many know it's the perfect will of God for you to have a great 
and powerful and prosperous and successful life. And that's the plan of action that he has. In Jesus' name. Stop listening to people that don't know anything. Cut them off. Will you do that? Did you hear that in the message? Switch it off. Switch on something brilliant. Listen to people that say, when they say something, something happens in you. When they say something, you learn something. You get challenged to do something more. Amen? Amen. All right, I love you. Blow me a kiss. Let's blow Jesus one right now. Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Ferris of 10,000, Everlasting Father, Bright and Morning Star, Amen, Faithful and True, Soon and Coming King, Bishop and Overseer of our souls, Amen, Faithful and True, Alpha and Omega, King of Kings. Come on, keep clapping and praise him. Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Ferris of 10,000. Bright and morning star, day star, day spring, great shepherd, the door of the sheep, the overcomer, the one who had conquered death, hell, and the grave for us forever. And his resurrection is proof that we have all power over the devil. Jesus, you reign supreme forevermore. Our whole aim in life is to walk with you, to serve you, to know you more, to be blessed by you. And let us all experience this thing from Isaiah 51.1. Take us from where we've been and take us apart that we can be blessed and increased by you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God bless you all. I love you. Amen. Let's, let's give the, a wave to the Lord as we go. Amen. God bless you.